Hallelujah. Praise God. Every day, every day is a miracle. Uh, it, it's always a rare privilege to bring the word, the word of God to your doorstep, to where you are. It's a rare privilege. And uh, I will not cease to appreciate many of you who have been, you know, out to watch and listen to our broadcast, even share it. I will not I will not cease. I will not stop to appreciate you and pray that your heart desire, God will ensure they come to pass speedily in the victorious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, right now there is a Bible study going on downstairs. I just said I needed to share a few things from the word of God. You know, uh, we have on Wednesday in our church uh, living by the word service. I just decided to take out the time to share some powerful things from the word of God. And uh, that thing is uh, keep quiet. <laughs> keep quiet. I know uh, for some of us who have listened to messages from different men of God, you start wondering, what is this man of God going to be talking about? Uh, keep quiet. Uh, well, let's quickly look at the book of Mark chapter 10. Uh, we're going to be seeing, the Lord bless you, somebody's already joining. We're going to be seeing uh, the life of a man who probably was born blind, blind by Timaeus, you know, suddenly appear. In, in, in the word of God and in Mark chapter 10, verse 47 to 52, it suddenly appeared and we saw, you know, what he exhibited, a lot of profound lessons that as many of us who are, who are serving Christ could easily connect with, could easily lay hands on. You know, verse 20, uh, 47 says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of uh, Nazareth, he began to cry out. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. What, what, what a call and what uh, a declaration. You know, that son of David, have mercy on me. And verse number 48 says, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, agreed thee. That son of David, have mercy on me. Verse number 49 tells us, and Jesus stood still. The, the appeal that was coming from this blind man touched the heart of Jesus Christ, even though uh, the people around Jesus told him, you know, uh, to, not to disturb Jesus, but Jesus heard him shouting. Jesus heard him cry. And verse 49 says, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, for he called thee. Isn't that amazing? The people who were stopping were not the one telling him the master is calling for him. But 50 says, and he, he, and he the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, cast him away his, uh, his, uh, his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. Isn't that amazing? He came to Jesus, and Jesus, verse 51 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, What will that that I should do unto thee? What exactly do you want? What do you want God to bring to pass in your life? Now that the year is coming to an end, you need to begin to have an amalgamation of things you would want God to fulfill in your life and destiny, possibly on the 31st night, like it normally happens in churches and ministry or across different parts of the world. Maybe you present us a request to God and up to now they haven't happened. This is the time to remind God. This is the time to tell him in our church, the Holy Ghost captioned this month as our November to be remembered. You will not only be remembered by God, you will be remembered by men and women that God has set on your path who appear to have turned their back on you. They will suddenly remember you and become a blessing to you in the victorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. And he said, what would that, that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Isn't that amazing? He, he, he was. He, he knew what he needed. He knew what he wanted. It wasn't just. Uh, it wasn't just making an appeal for the sake of it. He wanted something definite. He knew. He knew whatever form of needs that he may have, like everyone has needs. He knew that if only his sight could be recovered, every other thing can be taken care of by himself. And, 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 and look at what he, what he did. He said, that I might receive my sight. Instead of saying, Jesus, I needed a shoe. I needed a good clothes. I needed good clothes. I needed a good house. I needed, I needed a bed. He told Jesus specifically 
that I might receive my sight. And verse 52 says, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made uh, thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Now, keep quiet was something that broke forth out of this uh, message to me. Keep quiet. The people around Jesus Christ were harassing him. They were intimidating him. They were stopping him from gaining the attention of Jesus Christ. They told him to keep quiet. You know, what are the things around you that are telling you to keep quiet? They're telling you, shut up your mouth. They say, don't dare do it. What are the things telling you that in your personal life? Don't dare to do something new. There are things around you saying that. Don't attempt to be great. Don't go for greater achievement. You know, don't, don't think you can excel. Don't be different. Just conform and be like everybody else. That, that is what the word tells us. The moment you try to be who God actually wants you to be, they, they raise objection. You know, they tell you stay in your comfort zone. Don't worry yourself. No, don't, don't must you disturb yourself. It's okay. You said you want to go for prayer and fasting so that you can grow in the Lord. You said you want to start devoting time to studying the word of God so that you can become who God wants you to be. You say you want to go out and become a soul winner. They tell you who, who called you. Are you sure God called you? They, they just start saying all kinds of You say you want to live the right kind of life. Bring glory to God. They begin to cast as passion. What are the things, you know, that we tell you to shut up? Because... Uh, in the generation of Job, Job chapter 13, verse number 19, Job knew when you are to speak, when you keep your mouth shut, that you are exposed to all sorts of problems. Job knew, knew the implication. Job knew there was the need for him to speak up. There was a need for him to talk out. There was a need for him to stay up and stand up and represent his, himself, represent his interest, represent the vision, and be bold and be confident about it, no matter what anybody is saying. Look at what Job chapter 13, verse 19 says. Who is he that will plead with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, you see that? I shall give up the ghost. You must know when to be quiet, and you must know when to speak as a child of God. Let me quickly look at what are the things that will tell you to shut up when you are supposed to speak up. You know, like they, they told uh, the blind man. Keep quiet. Don't disturb Jesus. Don't harass Jesus. Don't, I mean, you are interfering with the protocol of this meeting. You know, people come up with all kinds of things. Number one is the situation you face at some time. Might tell you, keep quiet. Tell, keep quiet. You know, the situation you face will tell you that. Because the situation, the condition, the circumstances around us, as the will speaking to us with a voice louder than even the voice of human beings around us. That, that's, 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 that's the challenge of life. You, you just find yourself in a certain situation. Look at this man. He was a blind man. I mean, what could be as bad as that? What could be as worse as that kind of, of personal experience? He was blind. You know, he was blind. He couldn't see. And you know, the eye gate is, is the major gate of the body. Anybody who can't see is not, it's not something that... It's exciting. It's not. It's not a good experience. I had an experience like that many years ago when I, I, I almost, I almost couldn't see for one month, and I knew. I mean, it, it wasn't funny. You know, it was like it was like uh, what do you call it? A, a fog or or, or or a mist fall upon somebody's eyes. But I know it was an arrow. But go back to sender in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, that was the, the situation he faced. The situation was. You know I mean, there for him too. I mean, if possible, before that time, he had tried everything he knew how to, you know, to try and not to come out of it, you know, only for him to hear that Jesus Christ was coming. So he was ready to take advantage of the coming of Jesus Christ. Number two, the opinion of people you respect sometimes may stop you from speaking up, may stop you from taking daring step, may stop you from being bold, may stop you from attempting something that is bigger, something that is greater, something that could could take you to the next level. You know, the, 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 the opinion of people are, that you respect, you know. And also, number three, societal expectation. You know, for the woman with the issue of blood, for example, societal expectation, you know, could have stopped her from receiving her healing because she was not permitted by the norm, was not permitted by the tradition, was not permitted by the culture of the Jews, uh, I, rec I recognized by 
Mark, uh, Mark uh, chapter 5, where that story is talked about in a greater detail. You know, she didn't allow the culture to do the protocol. She didn't allow it to stop her. She broke through the crowd. In spite of her severe humorous situation, her condition, she broke through the crowd in order to be able to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. My God. And she got here. So societal expectations sometimes might tell you to keep quiet when you are supposed to be talking out. And the number four is the voices within you. The inner chattering in your mind. You know, sometimes some people see that you think they're quiet. Inside, there is argument going on from time to time. Depending on the individual, some people, there's so much talk going on in their inside than in the outside. Some people naturally look quiet, but they do more talking inside than doing more than the one they do out. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, so the, the voices within might be the one that is silencing you, that is telling you, who do you think you are? You know, who do you think you are? The inner voice that tells you what, what, you, what do you think you can do? Uh, 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 and, and, and you know you can't do anything. Those are, those are what the inner voices tell us from time to time. You know, can't do anything. You know, this, this situation is beyond you. You know, just adapt, just accept it the way they are. You know, that is the inner voices. You know, and their voice of unbelief, their voice of fear, faithlessness. You know, their voices, you know, that come to damp our zeal. Their voices from our inside that come to resist what God, greatness God wants to make out of us. Their voices that appear as if they are protecting us, but they are ensuring we do not become who God wants us to be. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Number five, the devil who doesn't want you to be here, to be helped, could be the one that is telling you to shut up. Shut up, that's what they told Blunt Bartimaeus. But thank God for Blunt Bartimaeus. He didn't listen to the voice of the situation. He didn't listen to people's opinion. He didn't listen to societal expectation. He didn't listen to the voices within him. Telling him, you know, to be quiet. Telling him to take it easy. Neither did he listen to the voice of the devil. No, he went forward and he got here. Glory be to God. Job said, who is he that will plead with me? Now, see that? You need to take your destiny in your hand. You need to rise up and begin to be bold. You need to rise up and fight against the spirit of fear and intimidation. And that was something that characterized the healing that... The blind man, blind Bartimaeus, God, he, he didn't take counsel from his fear. He didn't listen to the voice of doubt. He refused to listen. You know, glory be to God. Job said, if I hold my tongue, I shall give up the ghost. How many people are afraid in life? Because when they needed to speak, they kept quiet. How many people are afraid in life? Because when they needed to do something, when something with their life, when they needed to take decision, when they needed to rise up and be counted, they were scared. They were worried by all these uh, reasons I've mentioned, you know, above. And because of that, they didn't do anything. And time came and passed. I pray for you that's watching me by the midst of this broadcast. Time will not pass you by in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, you are hearing about this teaching today. I pray the faith to rise up and begin to take your position in Christ. Because we are God's children. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not in the sweet by and by. The moment you give your life to Christ, you have taken full advantage of the redemptive price that Jesus paid at the cross of Calvary to not only secure our salvation from sin, to secure our salvation from sickness as well as poverty. Those are the things Jesus has come to redeem us from. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Now, how to conquer new ground or do something new? How to conquer your ground or do something new? Number one, you must learn to rely on God's mercy. Like we read in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, 47 rather, I beg your pardon, and, 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 and I read here, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out <laughs> and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Let it be clear to all of us. That most of the thing God does for us is on the basis of mercy. He said, I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. When God decides to favor you with his mercy, you have to give God the glory. And one of the major reasons why God answers our prayer is on the basis of mercy. You know, you go to God on the basis of mercy. When you appeal to God on the basis of his mercy, God is, you know, bound one way or the other to answer you, to respond to you. 
You are not coming on with that spirit of holier than that attitude. You are not coming because you think you are the most holiest person around. You are coming because you know the price that Jesus Christ has paid. You are coming on the base of that. That son of David. He was talking to Jesus. The son of David. Because Jesus is from the lineage of David. He was appealing to his Messianic root. That son of David had mercy. When you call on God on the base of mercy, I can assure you, child of God, God would always want to answer you. Don't come to God thinking because you claim to be holy. That is because of that God answers you. <laughs> let me let you know. Because even our holiness, you know, our holiness like Fidirak in the sight of God, God would answer you because of what Jesus Christ has done. God will answer you because of his mercy. You remember Psalm 136 says his mercy is endured forever. It's on the basis of mercy God deals with the human race. Glory be to God. You will conquer new ground when you know how to rely on the mercy of God. And number two, because I'll be rounding up any moment from now. You know, number two, refuse to, 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 to listen to opinions that does not support your vision. Mm -hmm. That's what the blind by Timaeus did. Verse 48 says, and many charge him, charge blind by Timaeus, that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. The son of David, have mercy on me. He refused to, to hold his peace. He refused to be quiet. He refused to be deterred. He refused to be hindered. He refused to permit the obstacle that the people around Jesus were trained at him to stop his cry. He cried the more. In other words, he increased the volume of his shouting. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Glory be to God. You must, for you to rise, for you to be whom God has created you to be, for you to rise to a new level, the next level of your life, the next chapter of your life, you must refuse to listen to opinions that does not support your vision. Well, many people bring their opinion, you know, the opinion of people might be out of concern and out of love, but it may contradict God's plan for your life. You know, when the opinion of people, you know, even though it's out of love, out of concern, they're trying to protect you, you realize it's contradicting God's plan for your life, you must reject such opinion and take after that which you know God is speaking to you about. L listen to me. How does God speak to us? When you want to take a decision over a matter and you find that peace in your heart, you know, when peace becomes an umpire, when you think about taking that decision, you feel at ease with yourself. You feel at peace with yourself. Uh -huh. Then be rest assured that God wants you to do something. Even though there might be cacophony of voices, men might be raising their various thoughts about what you want to do, you know, that it may not be favorable to you and so on. So long you know this is what God is saying. Now listen, if you have to listen to the opinion of people, you may not break new ground. Because most of those people who are bringing their opinion, they are afraid to do something great. They are afraid to do something noble. And they want to ensure everybody remain at the same level with them. Are you, are you hearing me? Every great achiever were men and women who chose to do what they know God has sent them to do. No matter the odd, no matter the various negative opinion that might have, you know, greeted them each step of the way, they chose to obey God. Like Paul would say, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. As a calling called the heavenly calling. Paul says he was not disobedient to such call from the Almighty God. Blessed be the most holy name of Jesus Christ. Number three, do away with things that may hinder the realization of your dream. Like when you read verse number 50, Blind by Timel did something quite significant, did something quite noble. It did something quite noteworthy. What did he really do? And verse number 50 of um, Mark chapter 10, verse 50. And the Bible says, And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. He threw away his garment. For every dream to be realized, there are things you must do away with. There are things you must cast away. There are things you must stop doing. Or else it may never be realized. Do away with any anything 
that you know may end up hindering the realization of your dream. Do away with it. Do away with it. Anything you know may hinder the realization of your dream. Ensure you do away with such a thing. And God Almighty will bless you. And God Almighty will prosper you. Don't be afraid to take a stand when you know that is what the option God is giving to you. The Bible says, cast away his garment. You know, garment could be some form of hindrances that would have stopped him from seeing the realization, the manifestation of what he would want to happen in his life. You know, it might be an obstacle to him. He did away with it. You know, when you have a dream, you must find out things that are most likely to stop your dream from being realized. You must sit down to examine. You must sit down to do something about it. As you begin to uh, discover them, you take, you know, for, uh, create a kind of strategy to make sure you overcome them so that they don't stop you. Uh, for example, somebody who wants to be rich must not be involved in playing uh, uh, what they call lottery. You know, if you really want to be rich, you know, because most people that play lottery, sorry to say, hardly end up well. Maybe a safe few. You know, it's a game of chance. Some people have invested their life saving into some bogus lottery kind of business that didn't go anywhere. You know, you must be wise, you know, you know, because the moment money comes, you are going to see all kinds of human beings come around you, who want to speak to you, who want to cancel with you, who want to chip in their advice for one thing or the other. And you must be, you know, that is when you hear more, many people talking to you, that is the time you need to be closer to God. To be able to know the voice of the Holy Ghost. What is the Spirit of God saying to me? What is the Spirit of God communicating to me in this? It's good to listen to professional advice, professional counsel, you know, uh, uh, professional uh, or expert, expert uh, counsel regarding something. But it's equally good for you to pray to God. That's why, you know, we must be, you know, the Bible tells us as men that are laid as men that are led, you know, as men that are guided, as men that are, you know, shown the way by the Holy Ghost. He said they are truly the sons of God. You know, you need to always get personal clearance from God for whatever step, for whatever decision you take. You can listen to advice, you can listen to counsel, but you must pray to see, to see the advice, to be sure when God is speaking and when probably God is not speaking. Glory be to God. Number four, know what you really want. One thing I've discovered in life, I haven't been in the ministry for a while, I've realized many people don't know what they want in life. They don't know what they want in life. You know, that's why today they are doing this, tomorrow they are doing that, the next day they are doing this. Now listen, the fact that you began a business and you didn't get the quick results you expected doesn't mean that business might not have been uh, 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 you have, might not have been led into that business by the Holy Spirit. Listen, everything you do, there will, would always be a period of gestation, period of you know of trying to settle down, period of trying to know the business, period of trying to uh, 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 know how the business work and so on and so forth. And that time you may not be making profit. But that doesn't mean God didn't lead you to do such business as it were. So I encourage you, you need to know what you really want. Verse number uh, 51, Jesus answered and said unto blind Bartimaeus, what would that that I should do unto thee? Can you see the question? It was a specific question. What exactly would you want me to do, do for you? Like I said, blind Bartimaeus had needs of diverse kinds. He could tell God, I want to get close to where. I want new shoes to wear. I don't even have a house where I live. Blah, blah, blah. He could have uncountable needs like us. You know, we are, we are all human. And there are needs that surround our life. You know, from time to time, this uncountable need arises, you know, from time to time. That if the care is not taken, we might end up you know, being uh, 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 consumed by the need, it will might end up being distracted. You must know the specific things you want from God. It's like somebody praying, God bless me, bless me. That prayer is general prayer. 
specifically, where do you want God to bless you? Specifically, what do you want God to do for you? You know, before you pray, you have to know what you really want. You don't, we don't just pray aimlessly. We don't just pray without knowing what our targeted prayer is all about. Extremely important. You need to do that. Know what you really want. Now that the year is coming to an end, what, what exactly would you, how would you want this year to end up for you, members of your family, your loved one? What are the things you expect that will make this year a memorable year? That will make this year something to be remembered by the grace of God in years to come in your life and that of your family? This is the time to begin to bring them before God and begin to remind God of his promises. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Uh, the last but not the least, stay on with your faith no matter how long it takes. Blind Bartimaeus had people were stopping him and he began to cry and began to cry. That, is an, that was an expression of his faith. That is the practicality of faith, ability to stay on no matter what it takes. Nobody, you know, uh, 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 he had so many things that could have stopped him. You know, men were there, the crowd were there. You know, the, 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 some people would have been jesting, some people would have been laughing at him, some people would have been mocking at him at that place. But he stayed on by faith. He wanted to get the attention of Jesus no matter how long it would take him. And he kept calling, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And by faith, Jesus finally stood still and asked for him to be brought to him. And you knew that day he would see his sight. I see you moving toward the next level of your life. I see you breaking new ground. I see between now and end of this year, God doing some glorious things, new things in your life that will make you glad into the year 2024. I see all the obstacles that men or the devil might have placed on your, on your track, on your path. I see you overcoming them. I see you overcoming them. I see you overcoming them by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, thank you. I just felt for a long time I have not shared uh, like this, but I just felt, you know, we're having a Bible study, so I just felt I needed to stay up to quickly share with our viewers that different part of the world. I'd like to appreciate you for always being there. Please, as you get this uh, broadcast, ensure you have to share it, you have to like it, you have to run your comment. And God Almighty that has sent us to bring the gospel of hope, the gospel of encouragement, the gospel of faith, the gospel of inspiration, the gospel of change, we bless you in the victorious and the all-conquering name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you. So it has been the voice of Apostle Silver Daniel. By the grace of God, on Friday, I'm equally going to be on air for... You know, uh, prayer rain uh, that by 11.30 p.m., Friday night stroke, Saturday morning. So please keep a date with us. And on Sunday, you know, our services, uh, main service start by 9 o'clock. We have School of the Spirit by 8 o'clock. You can join us. And some of us will join us online in our services by 10 o'clock sharp. Our broadcast is already beaming. The Lord bless you and keep you. I'm actually ministry on the, on the platform of Love of Flame Ministries, also known as the Champions Chapel. And for your information, our church is located at kilometer 20, Navigate or Kokomaiko, Badagri Expressway or Kokomaiko, right here in the Joe local government area of Lagos State, Nigeria. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Until I come your way on Friday night, I'd like to quickly leave you with this. Remember, and it can only get better in your life. Your worst days, they are over already. I love you. God bless you. Bye for now.